very high uncertainty, although it is uh, striking that when you look at how markets traded today, for example, we haven't seen the outsized move that we've seen early in the year, for example, around uh, the Shanghai lockdown, for example, or uh, even more recently. So what that suggests is that investors are saying, yes, enormous near-term uncertainty. But guess what? Also, we're seeing already a lot of it is in the price, and we know that we have to get through really a tough few months before uh, the, the, the economy can open. So near-term, things look very challenging indeed. But doesn't this process really accelerate, perhaps, uh, uh, the reopening process over the course of next year? And I think that's what investors are focusing on as well. Tough near-term, but maybe medium term, there is an acceleration here towards reopening. Uh, Frederick, how do we think about the near term uncertainty, though, for businesses? Because we had uh, a protest at a Foxconn factory here. We've had protests that seem to be sweeping across various different cities. Does this pose any unrest to particular factories? Do we need to think about it escalating from here that poses a challenge for some of the corporates on the ground? Certainly huge uh, challenges there. We would say, though, that we've had uh, some of these moments before over the last couple of years when uh, we had lockdowns in China with fears about supply chain reliability. And really, broadly speaking, these were fairly quickly resolved. Uh, China has deployed a tremendous resources to ring fence critical manufacturing. I know perhaps some headlines uh, are kind of dominated by, by an iPhone factory, for example. But by and large, there's been this tremendous effort to ring fence production uh, when it comes to critical supply chain. So given that global demand for goods has actually slowed down, just look at the inventory buildup in the US, a disruption, short-term disruption in China is not going to have the big ripple effects that we had, say, uh, we would have had uh, last year, for example, when global goods demand was still on the boil. So that's kind of a silver lining here. Yes, some disruption, but it should be manageable from a global supply chain context. Rick, as we're talking about the short term and we've had these protests, uh, it is uh, fascinating to see that on the ground, though, the COVID spike does continue. We saw another increase on Sunday, fourth straight day of record cases. That is challenging short term, at least, isn't it, as we take a look at the situation on the ground. To what extent have we seen changes on factory floors that prevents the spread of COVID and still allows these businesses to continue? Well, it's a it's a varies a lot by province, uh, municipalities. Uh, essentially, we're seeing at the moment we've seen a whole myriad of responses. Some cities locking down, others being trying to be much more pragmatic. We're just a news out today, for example, in Guangdong province, we see a reduction in PCR testing requirement just to remove some of that extra burden. So it really depends on which area you're looking at. Uh, some some of the the provinces have done enormous uh, strides in terms of trying to ring fence local manufacturing uh, production others of obviously struggling with that so it's really a patchwork but i do think that's the first step towards a normalization because we need to experiment a little bit with the best approach going forward in terms of how the restrictions can be uh, tailored better to minimize the impact on on economic growth